hello again so today we are going to discuss the exercise problem 4.93 in which we have to find out the value of voltage v which is across this 10 ohm resistor by using the principle of superposition theorem this is part a of 4.93 problem similarly in part b of this problem we have to find out the power dissipation across the 10 ohm resistor so here we first of all we have to see that what is the principle of superposition theorem so in any linear element the uh, combined effect of any two or three sources is the cumulative effect of each of the separated source here okay so the effect provided across this 10 ohm resistor will be the effect of this 110 110 volts and similarly this 4 ampere source okay so in combining the effect of these two sources we can find out the voltage across the 10 ohm resistor okay as the resistor is a linear element the response it creates is basically the linear response if the value of it uh, remains constant so therefore first the voltage across it will be due to this 110 volts and similarly because of this for uh, ampere source okay so now in order to find the value of this voltage here what we have to do we have to find uh, out uh, the values just by considering each source alone okay so let us first consider the voltage source and uh, leave our current source uh, as it is okay. when we will neglect it what we'll do we will have to represent it by using its internal resistance okay so in any ideal current source the value of its internal resistance is infinite similarly in any ideal voltage source the value of the internal resistance is always zero okay so now considering the voltage source here and neglecting the four uh, ampere current source representing it with its internal resistance what will happen so now in part a of it what we have to do considering the voltage source okay so when we will consider the voltage source here what will happen we will just have the voltage source which can be represented like this similarly all the resistors will be here as it is okay so now this is my source and similarly as the internal resistance of uh, an ideal current source is always infinite therefore it is represented as the open circuit here okay so now writing the values of all the elements it will become 5 10 2 and 12 okay so now uh, what we have to do first of all we have to find out the current in uh, this element so by using uh, this method here let me find the current here and that is the i10 prime okay let me call it i10 prime okay so now in order to find the current here this uh, circuit can also be drawn like here as well because these two resistors are in series uh, therefore these can be added together and I will get here 14 this is 10 this is 5 and similar this is 110 volts okay so now in order to find uh, the current here what we have to do we have to find the current here we should have the total current here and after finding out the value of this total current we can use kcl here to find out the value of i10 prime okay so in order to find it out we should have a circuit in order to find the value of i total we should have a circuit in which we should have our equivalent and therefore it would be 110 volts and here it will be i10 or oh sorry i total let me remove it it 
would be i total okay so what will be the value of r equivalent here we can easily see here that the value of it will be 5 plus 10 in parallel with the 14 ohm uh, resistor these two are in parallel so therefore 5 plus 10 multiplied by 14 divided by 10 plus 14 which is 24 so here at the end by adding them uh, together what will we get we get here uh, 10.84 okay so it will be 10.84 ohm so the value of our equivalent will be 10.84 ohm once it is found so what we can do here we can easily find the value of i10 by using the kcl applying kcl here okay we can find out the value of i10 prime by using the kcl in which 10 plus 14 multiplied by it and the value of it is 10.84 okay so calculating it what will i get i will get it uh, 5.92 amperes okay so that is the value of i10 prime which is uh, find out by when only the voltage source is considered here okay so another step what we have to do another step we have to consider the current source and neglect the voltage source and by neglecting it i mean that i have to represent this voltage source by its internal uh, resistance here so let me draw that circuit here so in drawing that circuit this is the p in which we have to consider the current source only okay so when i will consider the current source the voltage source will be represented by its internal resistance and the internal resistance of an ideal voltage source is always zero so therefore the circuit here will be like this okay this is 2 this sorry this is 12 this is 2 this is the how much is this this is the uh, 4 amps current source 5 10 and it is short circuited due to the uh, internal resistance of an ideal current source okay so now when considering it uh, we can apply uh, and use many methods in order to find the current here and we call it i tan double prime okay so in order to find the value of i and double prime let me use the mesh current method because uh, as i can see here that one of the branch currents is uh, already known uh, so that's why i can very easily uh, perform uh, the calculations here just by deploying the mesh current method or the loop analysis so let me consider these meshes so uh, this is mesh number one in which i consider i1 uh, this is i2 and let me call it okay i3 so uh, from that we can easily see that the value of i3 is already known and the value of i3 is minus 4 amps because the direction of the current which is provided by the current source is uh, opposite as that of the current which is supposed here okay so i3 is equal to minus 4a now uh, considering Uh, mesh number one okay so in mesh number one so let me write all the equations in a very shortcut uh, manner because we already know the mesh current method uh, and we have discussed it uh, thoroughly in our lectures so that's why i'm writing the equations here so in first loop we have here 15 i1 uh, minus 10 i2 and similarly minus 5 i3 
equal 0 uh, taking 5 common and multiplying uh, dividing both sides by 5 what I will get I will get here 3 I 1 minus 2 I 2 and minus I 3 equal to 0 uh, or similarly I can write here 3 I 1 minus 2 I 2 equal to I 3 as the value of I 3 is already known and that is minus 4 so it can be written like 3 I 1 minus 2 I 2 equal to minus 4 let me call it equation number 1 okay so it was uh, the mesh number 1 now going towards the mesh number 2 here mesh number 2 here again writing all the equations in a very shortcut manner what will happen here is that minus 10 is the uh, resistance which is shared between the loop number 2 and loop number 1 similarly uh, the summation of the resistance is here is uh, basically plus 24 10 plus 12 is 22 plus 22 plus 2 is 24 22 24 i2 and similarly minus 2 uh, or, or 2 is shared between the mesh number 2 and mesh number 3 so that's why it would be minus 2 i3 equal to 0 uh, now taking 2 common from here what will happen it will become minus i1 plus 12 i2 minus i3 equal to 0 or bringing it to the other side minus i1 plus 12 i2 equal to i3 or minus 5 i1 plus 12 i2 equal to the value of i3 is minus 4 so let me call it equation number Okay. so as we have found out two equations in which we have uh, two unknowns so we can calculate or find the values of i1 and i2 by using any method whatsoever uh, we like okay so let me use the um, ordinary method in which i have to multiply the equation number one with five and equation number two with three and then adding them together what will happen here so let me multiply five with equation number one and three with equation number two okay so what will happen here here i will get 15 i1 minus 10 i2 equal to minus 20 okay multiplying four uh, five uh, to the both sides of this equation I will get the same equation which is here similarly multiplying 3 uh, to the both sides of equation number 2 here what I will get here minus 15 I 1 plus uh, 36 I 2 equal to uh, 3 multiplied by 4 is minus 12 okay okay so now these two will cancel out what will we get here uh, 36 and this will be 26 i2 equal to uh, here what will we get minus 32 okay or the value of i2 here would be minus 32 divided by 26 so let me calculate it so uh, the value 32 divided by 26 so it is 1.23 or minus 1.23 uh, sorry through three amperes okay so this is i2 so in order to calculate the value of i1 let me put this value in equation number one okay so in putting this value in uh, by putting this equ uh, value in equation number one what will i get 3i1 minus 2 into minus 1.23 equal to minus 4 okay or 3i1 minus 1.23 multiplied by 2 is 2 point here uh, this is minus 2.46 equal to minus 4 okay or um, 3i1 equal to minus 4 
this is minus minus plus and to the other side it will again become minus minus 2.46 or i1 is minus 6.46 divided by 3 so 6.46 divided by 3 is equal to the minus 2.15 okay so that is the value of i1 so now in order to find the value of i10 here what will be the value of i10 at the as the value of it is now downwards so the value of i10 double prime is equal to the i1 minus i2 here so the value of i1 is known and that is uh, minus 2.15 one five and similarly the value of i2 is minus 1.23 okay so minus 2.15 plus 1.23 adding them together what will i get 2.15 minus 1.23 so that would be minus 0. 92 amperes okay so that is the value of i10 double prime okay so uh, we have find out the values of uh, um, i10 double prime and i10 prime so what will be the value of i10 here which is the current uh, flowing through this 10 ohm resistor so now in order to find the value of I10 so according to the superposition theorem we can recall that the value of I10 will be I10 plus I10 uh, I10 prime plus I10 double prime so that are the values when each of the source was uh, considered uh, alone so the value of uh, I10 is 5.92 and the value of I10 double prime is how much minus 0 0.92 okay minus 0 0.92 okay so now when uh, this process is complete it would become the value of i10 will be 5 amperes okay so the value of it is 5 amperes similarly the value of v small v will be i r or the value of it will be 5 multiplied by 10 or the value of it will be 50 volts so the value of small v is 50 which is the answer of part a of our question okay so that is the answer of part a similarly in order to find the power which is dissipated across the 10 ohm resistor what we have to do as we already know the value of the voltage across this one and similarly we also know the value of the current here so here in part b the value of the power dissipation here will be v square divided by r the value of v is already known which is 50 and 50 square divided by 10 so that would be 2500 divided by 10 so these two will cancel out and i will have 250 watts okay so that is the answer of part b of our question so we have seen uh, the application of a uh, superposition theorem and circuit analysis and we have seen that if we have uh, the number of more number of sources the number of steps will increase because uh, here then each uh, of the source will be considered alone separate uh, equations will be formed and separate quantities will be obtained and at the end all of those quantities have to be added together in order to find the cumulative effect of those sources okay so that's it for today and uh, i will see you next time till then take care of yourself and thank you so much